Hello everyone, Liza Hudson from ConversionWise here and welcome to a quick video on getting more from your ad spend. So as always, before I jump into the topic of the day, I do have my couple of announcements. First and foremost, if you're watching us from YouTube and this is your first time here, thank you for joining us. And make sure that you head on over to Facebook after and search for the Conversion Wise community. This is a completely free Facebook group that we have set up. You'll also find a link below this video. In here, you will get free tips and tricks. It's just a great community where everybody kind of chips in and it's anything and everything to do with CRO. Plus, us in here we're always making our announcements so for our own kind of services um, you may or may not know that we uh, have our own CRO course um, we have our bespoke service of course um, we also launching a theme next year and so so much more so definitely worth keeping an eye on definitely worth being a member of and if you watch to the end of this video I do have a little cheeky discount code for you as well now again guys if you are currently watching us from the community firstly thanks for watching second Secondly, please click the subscribe button. So we want as many subscribers as possible and we will aim to keep giving you this sort of free content every single week. Now, what prompted today's uh, video is you'll likely, if you've watched our stuff before, you'll have seen a video very, very similar to this before, but I wanted to update it slightly. So when we're talking about your pay-per-click uh, tra uh, traffic advertising, we want you to get the absolute most out of your ad spend. And, and it's, it's so evident to us that people are just literally chucking money away. So in an ideal world, what we want you to do is drive to something called a direct response sales page. I will show you that in a short while. Um, and what we don't want you to do is run to your product pages. However, we are absolutely aware that people do run traffic to their product pages. And because of that, I think what I was going to do today is just show you just how they can be optimized to um, and what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing to get the most out of your ad spend. So I was looking on Shopify. I always keep an eye on their kind of like their version of their top product pages just to see what's going on. And um, you might have seen this one before because funnily enough, it is still their top pick for a product page. Now, for those of you that don't know us, don't know uh, kind of how we work, we work to lots of different principles here, but one of the things we apply is something called the ADA principle. You can look in other videos, but essentially it means that you need to capture your consumer's attention, pique their interest, create desire, and of course, give your consumer that action. Now, what I find so shocking about this page is that it's absolutely visually stunning. But if you imagine that you're actually sending a click here, you're paying for someone to get here, you don't have long to get people's attention. So there's so much that's kind of wrong here, it's unreal. So obviously one of the big downfalls of running to a product page is that you are going to have traffic leaks. Now, you know, it is a big, big factor in your conversion rate. So that's why we advise those direct response pages where there's no escape from, uh, from well, from making your purchase essentially. Now on this hero section as well, like there's no real value proposition there's just an absolute description here the pricing is tiny there's no call to action for me there's no social proof there's no trust there's literally nothing on this hero section of a product page mine that is going to make me want to purchase these apart from a really pretty image now as we go down we come down to their kind of like action section. And again, look, there's still no social proof anywhere. The call to action, it, it's absolutely bland. I, we understand that you want it to fit in with your branding, but you can still make these calls to action stand out. And in actual fact, the more it stands out against your branding, the more likely someone is to actually click on that button. You know, they've got a really good selling feature here, which is, um, you know, Klarna. If, you, if you've got Klarna, it can be a really good thing for conversion. But it's tiny. Again, we can't really see what's going on. There's no trust here at all. There's no payment icons. There's nothing to tell me this is a trustable kind of like page or brand. There's just so much missing. It's kind of unreal. Now, you should be piquing your consumer's interest at this point. And here they go into a video, which is fantastic. Videos on direct response pages as well are really, really good as long as they are short to the point and they explain your product really well. Um, so they've got a great video here. Then we go down into some uh, further content. Now, what I will say about this page is there's no denying it is visually sensational, but I am nearly at the bottom of the page. Here we're hitting some of the features. 
And at no point have we seen either a repeat call to action, have we seen um, any social proof whatsoever. Actually, I've just noticed there's literally zero social proof here. And it's one of the biggest key kind of conversion principles this day, these days. So we've got none of that. We've got nothing addressing their concerns. There's nothing really about the benefits here either. So there's so much kind of wrong with this page. I'm amazed that it is actually their top pick. And if we look at another example, this one's actually not quite so bad, but it's been a bit slow to load. So here, what I like is that we've got, you know, a little bit of uh, product imagery and we've got lots of different images to go with it. So I kind of like the way they've laid this out. Um, they've tried to give us a bit of info, which is nice. Um, this they could do better. So subscribe and save. We'd recommend that you actually auto select like they do on Amazon, the subs subscribe and save because people sometimes will just automatically do it if it's pre-selected for them. What I like is that they've got, you know, a decent call to action, you know, for the page. But again, there's no social proof above the fold. There's no trust here. Um, they've kept this quite neat. So I think this is one of the nicer ones in all honesty, but there's so much more that could be done. Uh, video, fantastic. We do have a bit of social proof here, which is good. Then as we go through the page, they've got really nice content, really nice content. But as we go through, we've got, yeah, again, no social proof. There's nothing to answer my questions. There's been zero repeat calls to actions on this page. So basically, if I want to, you know, do anything, I'm going to have to scroll all the way back to the top of the page. So it's just no good. And of course, we've got all of those lovely uh, traffic leaks, which we really, really despise in um, uh, in conversion. But it is a product page, so you would expect to see those there. So what do we want you to do? Well, first and foremost, we want you to go for a direct response sales page. Now, this is a wireframe. This is an example we use for education and for our designers. But this lays out to you exactly where you should be driving your traffic and the way in which you should be displaying it. So for starters, we give them this nice little uh, bit of a motive. Congratulations, you've got free shipping. Someone feels like they've been rewarded as soon as they leave. We've got your branding obviously here. We've got uh, um, trust seals here. So instantly we're starting to think, okay, I can trust these guys. And again, we have trust icons next to our call to action. Go with a nice strong product image. Make sure your image is uh, in image image is absolutely relevant and on point for your product and as good a quality as you can make it but don't forget to compress those images as well for speed nice little bit a uh, section for thumbnails and then we have all of this great stuff going on over here so we've got social proof in two places above the fold and this is what you want to do guys we want that star rating and we want that nice review above the fold. Call to action completely stands out from the crowd. Nice little emoji on there, increases your click-through rate. Then we have a nice, or we would have a nice headline here. Um, and with your headlines, try and keep them emotive, whether it's, you know, whatever, whatever's going on, whether you're driving to a product page or a direct response, always go with emotions and go with benefits because they are awesome for selling your products. Now here we'd have a little bit of uh, info. And then of course, these little bullets here would again be pulling out on those key benefits of purchasing this product today. Now, what looks like um, navigation leaks up here actually are not. So this is just going to link me down to whichever section on the page I want to go. Now, if we're just quickly following the principles, we've got grabbed our consumer's attention here. Here, we're going to give them that nice trust uh, wherever you've been featured or companies you worked with. Then we're going to break down a process step. These are really good for engaging your uh, consumer. So one, typically it'd be purchase your product. Two, we'll get it to you in such and such. Three, you're going to benefit from having the most gorgeous looking skin or whatever, whatever your product might be. We're then going to give them some more information. Again, you can know you can have features, you can combine this with benefits as well. And we repeat those calls to action, despite the fact that we have a sticky CTA, we repeat that call to action because we just want to keep giving people directional cues. And of course, we follow them up with supporting buffers. We've then got a nice little space for a video. Obviously, you can have more content. This just shows where you can have more kind of like imagery and content. Again, still backing up every single call to action as we go through. And then we go down into that desire section. So that key, key selling section, which is just missing 
on all of these pages. It's absolutely crazy. So desire, massive conversion principle. If you can have it on a carousel, it's always nice to uh, make your page a little bit more interactive. Plus you don't have to scroll for absolutely ages, especially on the mobile version. Here, this is just where you could obviously put some more images. And now we have that frequently asked question section. This is the beauty of a direct response page. You are going to address everything the consumer needs. They're going to know what your product is, how it's going to benefit them, how easy it's going to be to get the fact that they can trust you and the fact that others are using it. And you're going to answer any of their questions without them having to go away and look it up. So these are all key, key points uh, on your page. And of course, we end on an action. Now, this is a bundle page. So here we've got the one, three and six because we find that's a really good way of um, uh, displaying them. And you always want to pull that middle one out so that it's a uh, uh, it stands out more from the crowd. Now, pages like this would sit on a subdomain and you literally just want to hook that buy button up straight to your checkout. Do your uh, increase in your AOV on the page. You know, don't don't mess around. Don't take them to another product page. Don't take them anywhere in your store. You want to take them straight to checkout. And this is what we want you to do with your ad spend. We want you to go for a direct response page because they're going to perform the best. But that being said, like I said, we understand that people do drive traffic to their product pages. So how should you uh, actually optimize a product page? And what are the things that you can do to make it convert better? So you've probably seen these before. I've got two examples to run through quickly. They are slightly different in formats. But as you can see, this is a product page. This is a client of ours. It went absolutely insane. It's a great store. Of course, you're going to have your navigation. You have to. It's your store. But look how on the hero section on this product page, we're giving them the, uh, the social proof. We are giving them a sense of scarcity. It's a very subtle way of presenting scarcity because by having it in stock now and green, it kind of implies that it could go out of stock. So it's a really nice way to do it. We're showing the amount the consumer is saving. We've got a strong call to action, which is not the same color as our color palette. We've got trust icons, nice and evident above the fold. I mean, at this point, in all honesty, I could actually purchase this product without going any further because I've got everything I need to know here. So obviously, given your nice little product description, then as we go down, we're going straight in with that social proof. Social proof on a product page is just as important as it is on a direct response page. So you want to keep pushing that whole social proof as you go through. Now here we've got two lots of social proof and then we go into some nice content and we're still giving people directional cues. Yes, it's taking them to another part of your store, but ultimately you are still focusing your consumer's journey by giving them the directional cues you want them to take. And of course, we're backing each one up with our um, our supporting buffers. Clearly, we've got other products that we want to display because it's your store. And again, a nice repeat call to action, lots of imagery, and down we go. So the main things on your product page are that you want to use these calls to action to direct your consumers. Don't miss out on giving them additional content about your product. Make sure you get all that social proof on your page, nice and proud, and give them these key components on your hero section. So give the social proof, give the headline, give some nice content, you know, scarcity, call to action, trust, it's all here. And it's those little things that will make a difference and get you more from every penny that you're spending on your ads. Now, here's another example. And what I will say is don't try and copy these guys because they'll smash you out the park. <laughs> but um, another example, this is a product page in a store. So we have the imagery, we have the bullets, again, talking about the kind of product and what you're going to get. Again, a little way of doing scarcity. So stock selling fast, don't get disappointed. Look how emotive that is. We have social proof, we have trust proof, and we have additional trust proof because we've got this kind of like featured in as we go through. Now, what's really nice about this page is that we get loads of really cool content. So like their graphics graphics are amazing, but the content is really, really cool. Keeping it nice and fresh, giving some great imagery and the imagery is relevant as well. It's like, look, your happiness guaranteed and you see a happy child, you know, so these are all really great features. 
This is nice. We like process steps. So um, similar to on the direct response page, you can utilize these on your product pages. Um, so step one, you know, in this case, download or insert and learn. But on your, your page, it might simply be, you know, purchase this now, we'll get it to you and you'll benefit from. So again, like process steps on product pages work really, really well. Here, we're giving them nice repeating calls to action. Of course, we're going to go down into that social proof, which we talk about. Nice frequently asked questions section. And then we end on a big old action. So whilst we want you 100% on your paid media to send people to our direct response page, we still wanted to show you that you can optimize your product pages. So if you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can message me on Messenger. Um, and oh, I mentioned a little discount code. If you would like to get $500 off of our CRO course, Course, you can use my discount code, which is Liza VIP. That's L I Z A V I P, and that will get you $500 off. Now, of course, if you have any questions, let me know. If you're not a member of a group, make sure you ask to join, and hopefully, I will see you here on the next video.